Good afternoon, Hillspring kids. Sorry we had an issue with our countdown, but we're here and I'm glad to have you guys with us this afternoon. Hey guys. Hey. I'm Dan, I'm the pastor at Hillspring Church. I'm Owen, son of Dan. I'm Ashton, son of Dan. <laughs> and uh, we're so glad to have you guys with us this afternoon to have some fun, to do a craft, and uh, yeah, we're excited about that. So we have uh, as you're logging in, as always, please leave a comment below letting us know that you're here. Introduce yourself, say hello, and uh, we'd love to know that you're out there. And while you're doing that, our question of the week is this. So we want to know if you've ever gone on a boat ride before. And so uh, maybe it's been a canoe that you've ridden in before. Uh, maybe it was a paddle boat, you know, one of those ones that you sit in and you use your feet to paddle. Uh, maybe it was a ferry. A ferry is one of those huge boats that you actually drive your car on and it takes you across some water from one piece of land to another. So maybe you've been on a ferry before. Uh, maybe you've been lucky enough to be on a cruise, right? Where you uh, sleep on the boat and you uh, stay on there for a few days and see different places, um, all sorts of things. Maybe you go fishing with your mom or dad or your grandpa. Uh, whatever kind of boat that you've been on, leave in the comments and let us know what type of boat that was. All right, how many, what type of boats have you guys been on? A canoe. A canoe, yeah. Okay. Speed boat. A speed boat, right? Okay, or a fishing boat that has a motor anyways, and a racing speed boat, but yeah, yeah, a motor boat. Okay, any other ones? Fishing boat. Fishing boat, yeah, we've been out in the ocean, fishing out in the ocean on a fishing boat. The uh, boat at the Jungle Cruise in Disney. The boat at the Jungle Cruise in Disney. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true too. Yeah, a little uh, a ride. So sometimes the boats are part of a ride or something like that. So uh, let's see, Henry has been on a motorboat. Excellent, excellent. Good to see you guys here. And uh, as you're logging in, let us know what type of boat you've been on, if you've been on a boat. So whether that's been a ferry, uh, a canoe, uh, a rowboat is another type of boat. The one that you get in, you have the paddle, the oars, and you row the boat across a, a lake or a pond. A kayak would be a type of boat, um, could be a cruise ship, a ferry. Uh, okay, so we see that Monique and Jean have been on a ferry, so that's great. <clears throat> and what else do we see here? A motorboat, someone says they've been on a motorboat and a paddle boat, I think that's uh, June, Robin, and Lincoln have been on a paddle boat. Uh, let's see, we have Leora, Raphael, and Jonathan are here as well, that's awesome. And as you're coming in, the question we have for this week is what type of boat, if you've ever been on a boat, what type of boat have you been on? A canoe, a paddle boat, a ferry, a cruise ship, uh, whatever that might be. Let's see, I'm gonna take a look here and see if there's any other types of boats that you guys have been on. So we have uh, motor boats, and what else do we have? A ferry, okay. Uh, let's see, a pontoon boat. There's another type of boat as well. So a pontoon boat, uh, a houseboat is another type of boat, a uh, ferry boat. All right, the Gasperi boys have been on a pontoon boat and a ferry boat. Hello to you guys. And Avery and Samantha have been on a paddle boat and a canoe. All right. And we have a ferry and a speed boat as well from, let's see, who else said that? Yeah, Raphael, Leora, and Jonathan have been on a speed boat and a ferry. And Ava has been on a motorboat. So lots of you guys joining us this afternoon. That's awesome, isn't it? We love it. We love to know that you guys are out there. We're looking forward to having some fun with you. And uh, as you're coming in, you can still let us know what type of boat you've been on. So I like one of my favorite boats, if you want to call it a boat that I like to be on, is a canoe. So I actually have a really bright orange canoe. And we like to spend a lot of time in the canoe in the summer, don't we? And so we will pack our, our sleeping bags, a big backpack with a tent and a sleeping bag and food for a number of days. We put it all in the canoe and we paddle across uh, a lot of different lakes. And then when we get to the end of one lake, we pick up the canoe, if you can imagine, and we put it on our heads and we carry it that way with our backpacks and we carry it from one lake to another lake and that's called portaging. And then when we get in the next lake, we put everything back in the canoe and we keep going until we get to our campsite. And uh, a couple of summers ago though, we were out in our canoe. Now we weren't on a canoe trip like I just talked about, but we were out in the lake uh, fishing out of the canoe, right? And uh, we were out there. And before we knew it, when we were out in the lake, all of a sudden some really strong winds picked up and we found ourselves in the middle of a storm, right? And it was pretty scary because the canoe was going up and down and all over the place, so much so that our canoe tipped over 
and we are fishing rods and everything. They sunk to the bottom of the lake. But thankfully, a really nice person in a motorboat came along and he pulled us back to shore, right? We all got in the boat, uh, but it was scary, wasn't it? You know, being out in the lake in the middle of a storm. I wasn't there. I was. You weren't there for that one, right? But Ashton was there and uh, it was pretty scary being out in the storm in just a little boat. All right, let's take a look and see if anyone else has been in another boat. All right, Cheyenne and Rhea are here as well. Hey guys, uh, we're just asking everyone what type of boat you've been in. If you've ever been on a boat ride, what type of boat that is, whether that's a canoe, a ferry, a pontoon boat, a houseboat, all of those types of things. Because, and the reason we're asking this is because today uh, for our craft, we're actually going to be uh, making paper boats that, that actually float as well. Uh, they're flat right now, but when you open them up, they'll actually float on water. And so we're excited to be doing that. <clears throat> and then once we do them, you can actually, uh, mine's just plain like this. This is what it looks like before it's decorated. But then Ashton has one there that's uh, got some wood on the bottom. Not real wood, but he's colored it to look like wood. And then some red and blue on the top. And then Owen has the SS Mickey over there. So it's decorated with some Disney designs. Um, and so we're gonna have a chance to color those in and decorate them as well. And so if you're just joining us and you wanna get ready for the craft, uh, all you're gonna need this week is you're gonna need uh, a piece of paper, okay? For each boat that you wanna make, uh, some markers or some crayons uh, to color it in with. And then if you have some stickers or anything else like that, uh, you can grab those as well uh, just before we get started so that you'll have everything on hand to make the boats that we're going to make today. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Hey, Sean and Zane, I see you guys have joined us as well. And we're just asking people, if you've ever been on a boat, let us know what type of boat you've been on, okay? Any type of boat, whether that was a kayak, a canoe, a cruise boat, a pontoon boat, speed boat, motorboat. Uh, motorboat. Maybe you did some water skiing at some point and you got to ride in the motorboat tubing. as well or do some tubing, yes. yeah, which is really fun in the summer as well okay and so as you're joining us if you we're going to go into our craft really soon but make sure you grab some paper one piece of paper for each boat that you're going to make because we're going to make some boats today some uh, markers or some crayons to color it in with and we're going to get started okay so grab those now and we are going to start making our boats today all right so what we're going to do is grab a piece of paper for each boat Okay, and what you're gonna start doing is this. You're gonna take your piece of paper and you're going to fold it in half long ways like this, okay? So the easiest way is to line one corner up and hold it down and then take the other corner and line that one up and hold the edge down and then take your finger and rub it all the way down the seam and then you'll have a long rectangle like this, okay? Like that, all right? So you fold it in half, and then you're actually gonna open that up, and you're gonna do the same, but you're gonna do it the other way. And it's okay, we're gonna do this a couple of times, so if you don't get it the first time, that's okay. But the first one to do is to take your piece of paper, fold it in half long ways, right? And then open it up, and then we're gonna take the paper, and we're gonna fold it in half the other way. Okay. And once you have it like that, <clears throat> where you fold it lengthwise, <clears throat> and then you fold it this way, you're ready for the next step. Okay, you guys all set? All right, now what you want to do is you want to turn it around <clears throat> so that the paper opens towards you, okay? So that the fold is at the top. So once the fold is at the top like this, this line down the middle acts as a guide for us. And so we're gonna take this corner here and we're gonna fold it down so that this edge here lines up with the center, <clears throat> making a triangle. And then once you have that, you're gonna fold that as well. Okay. So take the corner, fold it over, 
so that lines up there. And then you can take the other corner and do the same thing. So that it lines up like this. All right. So you have this paper, you're going to fold that side in and this side in. And now you're going to have a point on the top. Okay. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take just one of the two pieces of paper, the two edges here, and you're going to fold them straight up until they go as far as they can, until they stop, and then fold that edge across the bottom. Okay, so take that up, fold it across the bottom. All right, good job, guys. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it over. Okay, and then you're going to take the other edge and you're going to do the same thing. All right. You do the same thing and fold it along like this. Kind of looks like a hat, doesn't it? Okay, and if you stop like that, you could you could probably wear it as a hat just like that. <clears throat> it looked like you could serve hamburgers wearing the hat like that or maybe have a birthday party if you decorated it, right? And then what we're gonna do though, is we're going to take the finger on the center here and on the other side, and you're going to pull those apart, okay? So that you have the two little points sticking up here. And then to take care of those points, you're just going to tuck one underneath the other one. <clears throat> okay. And then you're going to turn it over and you're going to do the same thing. And again, if you're, if you're just joining in or you're having a hard time keeping up, don't worry, we're going to do the whole thing again. So take that and tuck the two points underneath one another. Okay. And believe it or not, we we're almost done. We almost have our boat. So now the last thing you're going to do is you're going to take your fingers and hold one of these points, okay, like this, and you're gonna hold the other point like that, okay, and just pull them outward slightly, and pull the boat open like this. Now this is a tricky part, and so make sure you might wanna get your mom and dad to help you, but tilt the points up, and then the paper's gonna crinkle a little bit, and that's okay, you can smooth it out when you're done. You gotta take this edge that you folded over and flip it up, Okay, all the way around. And then once you've done that, then you can kind of take those points, put them back together, and fold it flat. And now it's starting to look more like a boat. Okay, that's the trickiest part of this whole thing. So. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can undo what I just did, but we'll redo it in a second. And then you actually have your boat ready and all you do is when, you, when you're ready for it to float, you just pull this apart a little bit like that and it will float in the water like that. There's your boat. And the two edges, it's almost, it's more like a pontoon. A pontoon works that way or a catamaran. Uh, there's a funny boat called a catamaran that has actually a pontoon on each side and that's what keeps it nice and stable in the water. That's kind of like what this boat is like because that keeps it stable. There are lots of other ways you could do paper boats, but this one works really well because it sits nice and flat on the water. Okay? How are you guys making out? Good. All right, I think we should try that again, right? Let's try that again so that people can see what we're doing. Let's take these ones away. Okay. And let's start from the beginning, okay? So if you got it the first time, maybe you can grab another piece of paper and make another one. Or if you're still working through the first one, we're gonna do it again so you can see what we're doing. So to begin, you're gonna take your piece of paper and you're gonna fold it in half long ways. So join your corners up like this. 
and then fold it in half like that. So you have a long rectangle. All right. And then you're actually gonna open it up and you're gonna fold it again the other way. Okay, make it like a nice rectangle. Like that. Okay, all right. And once you have it folded in half like this again, you want to put the fold, the folded side at the top and the open side at the bottom. Okay, so this is the folded side up here. And you're gonna take one corner on this side over here and you're gonna fold it over along the line that we made with the other fold. So that line acts as a guide. Okay, and then we're gonna take the other corner and we're gonna do the same thing like this. So that now you have a point. It starts to look kind of like the sail of a boat, doesn't it? of a sailboat. Okay. Once you have both of the corners folded in nice and neatly like that, you're gonna take one of the bottom pieces of paper. So you see this here, there's two pieces of paper. You're gonna take the one, and you're gonna fold it up over the top like this. All right. I'll give everyone a minute to fold that over. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna turn it over. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna fold that bottom little piece of paper up to make an edge or a lip like that. Okay. So now you'll have this point with two pieces of paper, fold it up on either side. And then you're gonna take your hands in the middle of each side. So grasp this side and this side. And you're gonna pull it open until the other two corners come down and meet. And then with these extra little points on the end here, you're gonna make it into a perfect square by folding those one over the other. So tucking one underneath the other. And on the other side, you're gonna do the same thing. You have these two little points. You're gonna tuck one underneath the other one, okay? So if you lay it down now, you'll have a square or a diamond, I guess, the way we're holding it like this. Okay. All right. And then you're gonna take your fingers on this point now, like just like we did before, hold these points together. And you're gonna pull them out, but as you do, you wanna curl the tips up a bit, because that's gonna start to make the bow and the stern of the boat, or the front and the back of the boat. And as you do that, you'll see that the sides here, they kind of get stuck. So this is where you're gonna crinkle your paper a little bit, and you're gonna gently fold that up on, one, on each side. And again, if it crinkles, don't worry about it, because you can, Smooth it all out once you're done. Okay? Smooth that all along until that gets like that. That's definitely the trickiest part, I think. Let's see if I can do it again just to show you. So you still have your square like that if you're still there. You're gonna take one corner, the other corner that has the, the, the tips folded over each other. You're gonna curl them up Curl them up a little bit and pull the part. Keep curling them up and then take your edges. Oh, I just ripped mine, that's okay. Here's mine are ripped. That's okay, nothing, a little bit of tape or something can't help, it'll still work. And curl them up and then fold it down like that. And now you have your boat, a flat boat. And then to make it float or to, when we go to, if you go, you're gonna go and float them, you're gonna take your boat like this and you're just gonna open it up a little bit like this. Okay. 
I'm gonna open it up a little bit so that it sits like that. And when it's like that, that'll actually sit on the water really well. Okay, that's gonna sit on the water really well. Okay. All right, so now that you have your boat, we're gonna actually decorate them. We're gonna spend some time, we're gonna make them look really nice because it's fun uh, to take our white paper and give it some color. So you can grab some markers or some crayons, whatever you like, and um, you can decorate your boat any way you want. So I know Ashton put some boards on the bottom to make it like a wooden boat. You can color it in gray, you can color it any color you want. You can put a design on it. This is your boat, and so if you had a, a custom boat or your own, your very own boat, color it the way you would want your boat to look. All right, so I'm gonna go with some bright orange today. Because, uh, gotta watch that we don't, I'm gonna hold this off the table so I don't get marker on the table. And I'm gonna color my top part in bright orange. And so you guys can go ahead and do that. And start coloring in your boat, whatever color you like. I'll use the crown. Maybe I'll do half orange and half of another color. What are your what are some of your favorite colors out there? I like a lot of different colors. What are your favorite colors? What's your favorite color, Ashton? Blue. Blue? What about you, Owen? Red. Red. Yeah, you guys like red and blue. Everything, almost everything Owen has is red. His shoes, his hats, his shirts, his backpack. Ashton has a lot of blue as well. Color it in any way you want. So you know there was there was another time, there's another story that I know of where someone kind of like ourselves got caught in a storm while out on a boat. And it was actually Jesus and his disciples, which his disciples were really, uh, you could call them students. They were people who followed Jesus around and they listened to his teaching and they learned to do the things that he did. Those were called disciples. And one day Jesus was teaching, he was teaching a bunch of people in an area called Galilee. And after he had taught for a while, they decided to get in a boat and to cross the other side of a lake called Lake Kinneret or, or the Sea of Galilee is another name for it. And so they all got in a boat and they started going across the lake. And the lake is known for having really bad storms come up really quickly. And before you knew it, they knew it. The disciples found themselves in the middle of a really, really big storm, so much so that waves were coming up and going over top of the boat and were almost going to sink the boat. Can you imagine how scary that would be? Hey, I would find that pretty scary. And so the disciples were really scared because there was a storm in, you know, they were out in this lake in a boat and there was a storm that was about to sink the boat that they were in. And so they were panicking and they started looking for Jesus. And do you know where they found Jesus? They found him asleep. <laughs> they found him sleeping in the back of the boat, in the stern, in the back of the boat. Jesus was asleep on a cushion. Can you imagine in the middle of a big storm that Jesus was peacefully sleeping away? <laughs> and so the disciples went over to him and they said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? They said, you know, you don't care that the ship is, or the boat that we're in is about to sink. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus got up and he looked at the big waves and he said, calm down. <laughs> he said, calm down. And you know what happened? The waves were calm. The waves stopped. The entire storm stopped and the, and the whole Sea of Galilee was peaceful again. And then he looked at the disciples and he said to them, why are you so afraid? You know, why are you so afraid? You don't have faith? You know, why are you so afraid? Which, you know, the disciples themselves must have been thinking, well, why do you think we're afraid? You know, we were just in the middle of a huge storm. But Jesus' question for them 
was, why are you so afraid? And then the disciples said to each other, this is a verse actually in Mark, I'm gonna put it up there. They said, who is this? Talking about Jesus, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him, right? And so, I mean, for all of you people out there, all the, all the Hillspring kids, or you know, maybe you're not, you're, you're not you, a Hillspring kid, you've never been to Hillspring, but we're glad that you've joined us and you can consider yourself a Hillspring kid anytime you want. Um, you know, do, you, do you, do the wind and the waves obey you? Anyone out there? Let me know in the comments. If you tell the wind to stop, does the wind stop? Or if you were out in a boat and there was a storm, does it obey you? Does, does nature obey you? Right? So the disciples, the big question was, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey? Yeah, no, they, the wind and the waves don't obey us, do they? Right? They don't listen to us, right? So. Who do you think the wind and the waves would obey? Who do you think creation would listen to? And if you think you know, put it in the comments there. I want you to think about that. It's a really big question, you know, who is this that the wind and the waves would obey? And if you know, who do you think? Yeah, June and Robin said, no, the waves and the wind don't obey them. Raphael says that too, no. Can you imagine? So who do you think that creation does listen to? You can keep coloring. If the wind and the waves and the creation doesn't listen to me, it doesn't obey me, Okay, Robin and June, they said, Jesus. Yeah. He says, calm down. So Jesus, so we know that we know that the wind and the waves listen to Jesus in the story. But why do you think the wind and the waves obeyed Jesus and not the disciples? So there was a whole bunch of men in the boat, the disciples, and then there was Jesus. And why do you think the wind and the waves obey Jesus? Was he a man just like everybody else? Because this is an important lesson in the story. And that's the important question. Why, you know, who is Jesus even that the wind and the waves obey him? So we know that the wind and the waves obeyed him because Jesus was the one in the story. But who is Jesus that the wind and the waves would obey him? That's the big question. Was he just a teacher? Like your teacher at school? Does the, does, do the wind and the waves obey your teacher at school? Okay, lots of people are saying that the wind and the waves obey Jesus and you're right. But I want you to think about, they knew that the wind and the waves obeyed Jesus, yet still they said, who is this that the wind and the waves obey him? So why do you think the wind and the waves obey Jesus? Even though he was a teacher, he's not like a normal teacher. Who is he? Okay, how about this? Who made creation? Jesus was involved. When you think about that, who do you, who do you think of as making creation? Who's responsible for creating the sun, the moon, and the stars, and everything? My boat's almost done. Okay. And wait one more second. Who is Jesus that the wind and the waves would obey him? Jesus is God's son, right? Jesus is God. Jesus is divine, right? And so the reason why, that's the answer to the question. The reason why the wind and the waves obey him is because Jesus wasn't just a man. Jesus was God as a man who had came to us as a man. He was God's son. And so the reason why creation obeys Jesus is because Jesus was involved in creating all of those things, right? And so that's really important that Jesus wasn't just a teacher, 
The reason why they shouldn't have been afraid is because God was with them in the boat through Jesus, right? That God was with them in the boat through Jesus. Jesus is God with us, okay? And so this story teaches us that, that Jesus is God who is with us and he's in control, right? So no matter where we are, and we just learned on Easter that not only that Jesus is alive, right? So that Jesus is, is alive, he rose from the dead, and he lives in us through his Holy Spirit. And so we know that no matter what kind of storm we're in, no matter what kind of storm, no matter how scary we, of a situation we might find ourselves in, right? We know that through Jesus, God is with us and God's in control, right? God's always in control. And so the reason why Jesus said, why are you afraid is because he, was, he wanted them to understand that God was with them through himself, through Jesus, and they didn't need to be afraid. And so we don't need to be afraid either because God is always with us. No matter what we find ourselves in, even if it's a big storm, uh, God is always with us and God is in control. So we don't need to be afraid, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're actually, you know what, my boat is done, I hope your boat may be done, and if not, that's okay. You guys can finish it up, right? after and please when you finish up your boat uh, send a picture to us at to connect at hillspringchurch.org because we want to start showing some of these pictures on sunday mornings to the adults of the church so that they can see what you guys are are learning and what you guys are creating throughout the week so if you have your boat you know make sure afterwards mom and dad uh, or mom or dad take a picture of you and your boat send it to connect at hillspringchurch.org and uh, we'll make sure that we show these to the adults on Sunday morning. Now we don't want to go yet though, do we? Because we want to get some water here and we want to test our boats. So don't put them in there yet. And maybe if you're lucky, mom and dad will do this with you later. And maybe you'll have, maybe you'll have a bath later and you can take your boat with you, right? Or maybe you can uh, fill up a sink with water. That's an easy way of doing this. Maybe a bathroom sink, a kitchen sink or the laundry room. But now you can take your boats and you can set them in the water and they'll actually float around in the water. Oh. You gotta open them up first though, right? So make sure you pull the bottom apart so that it works as a boat and it'll float up right on the water. And then you can push them around and they will float all around for a while on the water. Let's open this one up more. <laughs> okay, they will float more on the water and you can play with them. Now eventually the paper will get wet and they will start to sink. Here, you have another one there, don't you, Owen? Okay. You have another boat there. You gotta pull the sides out like this. Okay, open it right up. And there, okay? So afterwards, make sure you, you take your boats and uh, maybe mom and dad can put a bit of water in the bathtub or in a sink or in a tub of uh, you know container like this and you can float them around a little bit, okay? But thanks for joining us this afternoon. We're so glad you're with us. Uh, we're gonna just pray right now. We're gonna ask God to, we're gonna thank him that he reminds us that he's always with us because of Jesus. And God is with us always. And we don't need to be afraid. And uh, so let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus to be with us and that you are with us always. No matter how scared we might be, maybe that's at night, Maybe there's other situations that we find very frightening or very scary. Uh, we thank you that we can know because of Jesus that you are with us always. You are always with us and you are in control. So we don't need to be afraid. So thank you for telling us that today. Thank you that we can get together uh, as uh, Hillspring kids to have some fun together and also to learn more about you. And we ask all these things and we thank you for who you are in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us again. Please send us a picture to Hillspring to uh, connect at hillspringchurch.org. Connect at hillspringchurch.org. Send in your pictures of your boats so that we can take a look at those. And uh, we're so thankful that you guys were with us today. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Take care.